saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, saying with a loud Welcome everyone to this presentation and before we begin this presentation a courtesy of gospel sounders from our home studio I would want to welcome my wife to give a piece of music and then we'll go straight to the message welcome Holy words long preserved for a walk in this world they resound with God's own heart Oh, let the ancient words impart Ancient words ever true Changing me and changing you They resound with God's own heart Oh, let the ancient words impart Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. In this world, where we roam, ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith, handed down to this age, came to us through sacrifice, oh hear the faithful words of Christ. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Wow, so we are so grateful for that beautiful piece of music and it's indeed true that those ancient words, the messages from God's beautiful word, the Bible, has been a great blessing to so many people, millions and millions of people through centuries before. The words of the Bible have encouraged the reformers, it encouraged the apostles, it encouraged our patriarchs and our prophets. We know it has been a source of encouragement to the pioneers of our movement as Seventh-day Adventists. And so those ancient words are ever true. It's that which we desire to study every day. The Bible says they are life and spirit. And so before we go to our message today, I would want us to bow down for a word of prayer. And our message title is Bible Sanctification. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to share what we believe is truth. We pray that this message may bless your children. And it may help us, Lord, to draw closer to thee than ever before. This is our prayer by faith in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Quite for some time, I have been receiving 
a number of concerns in regards to what is true Bible sanctification. And this time I want to share with us what I believe from my heart and from the Bible is true Bible sanctification. Many of us are confused about what the Bible says about sanctification as a Bible doctrine in relation with Bible truths. And this is what I want to share with us. Many people in the world today believe that it doesn't matter what you believe. If only you can be able to reflect the character of Jesus Christ. But the question should be, how do we receive the character of Jesus Christ and reflect it to the world? This is what we, in our study, and mean, look forward to give an answer to. In John chapter number 17, from verses number 17, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is the truth. Chapter 17 is God's, I mean, own son praying for his disciples. This is not an ordinary chapter. He has not, it has not been written in just any atmosphere. This is a prayer atmosphere. And Christ, he's praying for his disciples that they may be ready to finish the work. These are some of the few chapters just before he goes to Gethsemane. Then before Pilate and Herod and uh, San Edrin and then off to the cross. I believe this is one of the most important chapters in the Bible. And in these chapters, God brings to us a message through his son or rather. Christ brings to us a message, which I believe is God's message. And that message is as he prays, he asks his father to sanctify his disciples. But he does not stop there. He mentions how the father should sanctify the disciples. And he says, sanctify them through thy word. Bible sanctification is through the word of God. And that word is truth. Remember, the Bible says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father except through me. We cannot get to the Father in error. We must know what is truth, understand it intelligently, and then in a special way allow it to have power to transform our lives. Then we will draw closer to Jesus Christ. And so when it says that sanctify them through thy word, or rather through thy truth, the Bible begins to say, ends by saying, thy word is the truth. So it's from the word of God that we are sanctified. When we study the word of God and allow the power, the life that is issued forth from that word to transform us, we become like Jesus Christ. I don't know whether you will think about chapter 17, verse 19 of the same book of John. It says, And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also must be, might be sanctified through the truth. True Bible sanctification is through the truth. That is why you realize that in the book of John, I want to read for us John chapter 16 from verse number 13. It says, How bait, when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. The only demonstration that we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit is when we are actually drawn into a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And Christ is the truth. That is why when the spirit of truth is come, the Bible says that he shall lead us into all truth. Bible sanctification or exemplification of the Christian character, demonstration of a Christian character, is not a mere flight of feeling. It is actually intelligently obeying God. That is why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. The mind of Christ must be our mind. 
The life of Christ must be our lives. That is why the Bible says that when Christ comes, we shall be even as he is. And so let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. Simply trying to say, let the will of the Father through his Son be in us. That is the mind which was in Christ Jesus. It was the mind of the Father. That's why the Father says, the Son says that I have done the will of him that sent me. So the spirit of truth, it guides men into all truth. There is no, not an iota of error in truth. And so when the Bible says, I will send the spirit of truth. That spirit of truth will be demonstrated, its power rather will be demonstrated by that spirit guiding us into truth. And so many brethren will tell you, hey, brother, it doesn't matter what you believe. Let's put aside all the doctrinal controversies. Let us be, I mean, let us be all concerned about character development. But question is, can we develop character in error? Can we be sanctified while we do not cherish and love the truth? Bible sanctification is not based on error. Listen to what the Bible says as Paul writes to the first Thessalonians. And I will read from chapter number 4 and verses number 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. The will of God is that we be sanctified. But we've realized we cannot be sanctified while we hold error. We cannot be sanctified while we, we neglect to follow truth. It is only to truth that God's people can be sanctified. First Peter, talking about sanctification, being made holy. First Peter, chapter 1. First Peter, chapter 1. Reading from verses number 22, listen to what the Bible says. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So, the Bible is saying, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. So, how do you purify your souls? Well, the Bible says we purify our souls in obeying the truth. So we cannot be able to purify or to be sanctified while we do not obey the truth. That is why the Bible says the spirit of truth, it shall guide us into all truth. Sanctification is only affected through truth. That's why Christ says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. John 6 verses number 63, the Bible says, The words which I speak unto you, they are life and they are spirit. Christ in chapter 6 of John told his disciples, Except you eat my flesh daily, you have no life in you. In studying God's word, in knowing what is truth, and practicing what is truth, and allowing truth to transform our lives, that is Bible sanctification. I like what the Bible says in John chapter 15, verses number 3. In John chapter 15, verses number 3, if you will, John chapter number 15, verses number 3, the Bible says, Now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. We are cleansed by obeying the word of Christ. Many people in evading the truth because they refuse to obey the truth. Because their conscience has been seared as with a hot iron. Run into the excuse that it's not important what we believe. Especially when you bring up controversial, what they call controversial points of faith. 
when you bring up issues such as God's worship day, issues as what which God we worship, the world always feels that we are going overboard and actually bypassing what it is that God expects us to do. God's will is our sanctification, but which sanctification? A sanctification which is through the truth and by the truth. And so Peter has just mentioned to us that we are sanctified, or rather purified or made holy. Remember, in the sanctuary, we know that the priests, they were sanctified, they were purified, they were set apart. We know the vessels, they were sanctified, they were purified, they were set apart. In other words, in the simple terms, they were consecrated. Consecration means to put apart for a holy service. Sanctification also means not only to put up aside or set aside, but it also means to remove sin that the very life of Christ may be demonstrated through humanity. Remember that everything we are carrying to heaven is correct. But sanctification is not mere goodness. Bible sanctification is that experience that comes by obeying the truth. Dreaming sanctification follows the channel of Bible truth. That's amazing to me. It is not grounded on flights of feeling, but on the immutable truths of God's word. It is the truth received through the mind and practically practiced out in the life. When we receive the truths, the doctrinal truths that have been given to us in the Bible, and leave it out. That is sanctification. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a feeling. It's not some essence. It's not some power, mysterious, unknown. It is actually the studying of the Bible, accepting what it says, and allowing it to do a work of transformation in your life. It's important also to notice when the truth is received and carried out, there is a radical work, a change indeed. And those who receive and obey the truth are not destitute of good feeling. They have an inward satisfaction for well-doing and enjoy their probation and blessings of the Lord to encourage and strengthen them in the great and glorious work. And so we realize that some group of people evade the truth with the idea that they have the spirit with the idea that all that is important is character. I want to be good. I want to be honest. I want to be charitable. I want to be all these things. But listen, many have tried to evade the truth by reason that they have the Spirit and consequently the sanctification of the Spirit. But the sanctification of the Spirit is Bible sanctification. It is not sanctification outside truth. It is sanctification in truth. Brethren, we cannot be sanctified in error. When we believe error, we do not receive the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth leads us to truth. The spirit of error leads us to error. That is why the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth. The Bible also said unto us, the Bible is given by inspiration and is profitable for reproof, for doctrine, for teaching, for instruction, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That thoroughly furnished unto all good works, into righteousness, is actually the Bible pointing, out, pointing us into what it is that God is saying and us asking God that he may allow us or strengthen us to be able to practice those that he has said to us out of our lives. But the leading, and I want us to realize, the leading office of the Holy Spirit is the office of truth. Realize, the most important characteristic that we need to mark out when we are looking for those who are led by the Holy Spirit, is the truth. 
the leading office of the Holy Spirit is to lead man into truth. And so it doesn't matter what we do. If we are in error, we don't have the spirit of truth. The church can demonstrate good works. They can help the poor. They can go about doing good music. But if they are holding into grievous errors, they don't have the spirit. And therefore they cannot produce the true fruits of the Holy Spirit. Sister White says that true Christianity is not being a mere societal moralist. It's not being a mere humanistic. It is not being a good man in the society. It's more than that. It's obeying the truth and allowing that truth to transform your life. This is interesting. It is to guide you to the truth that God sends his spirit. And to allow that truth, which is his word, to transform your life. Listen to what I love in chapter 17 uh, of John in verses number 13. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The spirit and the truth agree. I'll be able to read for us from great controversy. The spirit is the great agent that God employs in sanctifying men. And Bible sanctification is called the sanctification of the spirit. The spirit helps our infirmities. It helps us to understand, receive, and practice truth. And so if you ask me who is being led by the Holy Spirit, I will show you they are they whom God is leading to understand his truths and share his truth. The main office of the Holy Spirit is to lead people to the truths of God's word. It's not to give you all the wealth. It's not to make you the most up in voice or vocals a preacher, the most charismatic preacher. It's not actually to make you look like you are the, the most humanistic person in the world. The most important office of the Holy Spirit is to show us the will of God. True Bible sanctification is based on truth. Therefore, that spirit which is not in harmony with the truths of God's word is not the sanctifying spirit of truth. And the sanctification which is based on the leadings and the teachings of such a spirit is a false sanctification. Any character that is not based on the truth is a false character. The world may admire it. The church may admire it. Where you work, they may admire it. But the truth is, that character is a false character. It's not a character that is of God, of the Spirit of God. The only character which is of God is that which is developed by obeying the truth. And so it's important for us to realize that sanctification is only on truth. I'd love to show you, maybe in the book Great Controversy, 678, paragraph 1. Great Controversy, 678, paragraph 1. And the years of eternity as they roll, will bring richer and still more richer revelations of God and of Christ. Richer and richer revelations of God and of Christ. I know that that is one of the most confusing truth that many people have not understood. The Bible says in John chapter 17 verses number 3, This is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Christ Jesus whom he has sent. The knowledge of God, the Father, 
and his son Jesus Christ that that is life in heaven. But many sideline that truth. Why? Because they feel that it's not important. It's divisive. But do you know you can never be sanctified without understanding who God is? Do you know you can never be sanctified without understanding which day that God ought to be worshipped? Do you know you cannot be sanctified if you neglect understanding how that God ought to be worshipped? The who, the how, and the when are important for us to receive complete sanctification in Christ. God's messengers have a message. And those who are convicted by those messages of truth are transformed. Why? Because there is power in the truth. She says, as knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. So as we continue studying to get more knowledge concerning the truths God is revealing to his children in the last days, so will love, reverence, and happiness increase. True Christian character is developed more and more and is, 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 is actually uh, reflected in our lives more and more as we look around, as we study more and more concerning the truths of the Bible. Something interesting. The more men of God the greater, the more men learn of God, sorry, the more we study who God is, the more we study who His Son is, the more we understand who is it that died for us, the more we study concerning His commandments, the more we study concerning who the Spirit is, the more we study concerning country living and health reform messages, and the more we study concerning the educational messages, the more we study about all these grand messages, the plan of redemption, the sanctuary, the more we study, I mean, the, 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 the fundamental beliefs or principles of, of the pioneer historic Seventh-day Adventism. Listen to what Sister White says the greater will be their admiration of his character. We will never come into a point where we admire with longing, lasting intensity the character of the Father and the Son if we neglect our duty to study the Word of God. Christ said unto the Pharisees of the Jews, brother, You study the scriptures, thinking that in them is eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. When we study the scripture, they testify of who Christ is. They tell us his identity and his character. His character and his identity are inseparable. To know who he is as the true son of God, is what transforms your life. Now someone may say, wait a minute, do you mean that just knowing that Christ is the Son of God is sufficient to transform your life? Well, I would say this, do you know that to, I mean, do you know rather that if you do not understand that he is the Son of God, your sanctification is false? And so, if you are a true Christian, then your safety is knowing the true identity of Christ as the Son of God and accepting His sacrifice as a true literal Son of God and accepting the opportunities giving us to be transformed by His Word. As Jesus opens before them the riches of redemption and the amazing achievements in the great controversy with Satan. The hearts of the ransom thrill with more fervent devotion and with their more rapturous joy 
they sweep the harps of gold and ten thousands times ten thousands and ten thousands of thousands of voices unite to swell in the mighty chorus. Oh, how I long for such an experience. Let's see what God says in this wonderful book, Great Controversy, 597. Great controversy about this beautiful subject, the Bible-based sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. We cannot be sanctified in error, my friends. Those things which the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, or entered into the heart of man, God has revealed them unto them that love him. If you love me, keep my commandments. The law of God, that truth, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to these things, there is no light in them. Listen to what it says. Paragraph 2. Great Controversy 597, Paragraph 2. The truth and the glory of God are inseparable. The truth and the glory, you remember, Moses told, ask God, show me thy glory. And God began showing him his character. The truth and the character of God are inseparable. That's what Sister White is saying. She's saying, the truth and the glory. But yes, Moses asked God, please show me thy glory. Show me your face, show me your glory. God did not show him his literal face, we know that. God began to mention his character. God showed him his character. The glory of God is his character. Fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come. That's the first angel's message. Can we be sanctified and receive the glory of God and be glorified and, and be translated while we neglect truth? No. No, I say no. We cannot be sanctified and receive translation or sit with God in heaven while we believe error when there is an opportunity to understand what is truth. And I'm speaking specifically to Seventh-day Adventists who have neglected to study what truth is because they feel it is divisive. Who have neglected to understand what truth is when they have an opportunity to understand what truth is. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible to separate truth and the glory of God. It is impossible for us, with the Bible within our reach, to honor God with erroneous opinions. In fact, when you have erroneous opinions while you have the Bible within your reach, it is disrespect to God. We cannot honor God while we hold erroneous opinions. Many claim that it matters not what one believes. I can believe. I've had preachers, great preachers say it doesn't matter how many gods you believe in. Whether there are ten or three gods or one God. When I believe that God sanctifies only through Bible truths. And so if we contradict the Bible's expression and revelation of who God is, we counter the very spirit of truth because it leads men only to truth. Many claim that it matters not what one believes. If his life is only right, but the life is molded by faith. Life is only molded by a true faith. If it didn't matter what one believes, I'd have wished my mother remained a Catholic. I'd have wished that she never changed religion. I'd have wished many friends of mine never made a decision to follow the only true God. But I don't believe that what you believe does not matter. It is faith that molds character. If light and truth is within our reach, if the truth is presented to you, if a book is given to you to read, if a missionary comes to your house to share with you the truth, 
If you go to YouTube and you find messages of truth and you neglect to improve the opportunity of hearing or reading or seeing it, we virtually reject that truth. We are choosing darkness rather than light. Ellen White says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. The idea that what we believe does not matter is a way that seemeth right unto man. The idea that it doesn't matter what we believe is a way that leadeth unto, see, seemeth right, but leadeth unto death. I would call it an instrument of death. Because many of us today have a gospel that is packed with all that is important and is correct. Let us not be divisive. Let us come together. Let us put aside all the doctrinal difference. Let's go forward winning souls for Christ. That is ecumenism. When we put aside the word of God, when we put aside the truth of God, for the sake of going to win souls, it is clear. The Pharisees, they traversed seas and lands, but they made those people towards the children of hell. I believe with all my heart that today that is what Laodicea is doing. Laodicea is making thousands and thousands of people towards the children of hell. Ignorance is no excuse for error or sin. When there is every opportunity to know the will of God, a man is traveling and comes to a place where there, is, there are several roads and a guideboard indicating where each one leads. If he disregards the guideboard and takes whichever road seems to him to be right, he may be ever so sincere but will in all probability find himself in the wrong road. Brothers and sisters, God has given us His Word that we may become acquainted with its teachings and know for ourselves what it requires of us. When the lawyer comes to Jesus with the inquiry, what shall I do in order to have eternal life? The Savior referred him to the scripture saying, what is written in the law? How readest thou? Ignorance will not excuse young or old, not release them from the punishment due for the transgression of the law. Because there is in the end a faithful presentation of that law and of its principles and claims, it is not enough to have good intentions. It is not enough to do what a man thinks is right or what the minister tells him is right. His soul salvation is at stake. And he should cite the scriptures for himself to know what is truth. Friend, put aside what your pastor tells you. Put aside what your elder tells you. Take your Bible and listen to the voice of Jesus. He is the spirit of truth. He will lead you to all truth. However strong may be his convictions, however confident he may be that the minister know what is truth, this is not his foundation. Our foundation is not in the church books. Our foundation is not on ministers. Our foundation is on the word of God. And if the foundations be broken, what shall the righteous do? He has a chart pointing out every waymark on the heavenward journey. And he ought not to guess at anything. It is the first and the highest duty of every rational being to learn from the scriptures what is truth. Bible sanctification is sanctification by learning what is truth. And then after learning the truth, and then to walk in the light and encourage others to follow his example. This is what Paul did. We should day by day study the Bible diligently, weighing every thought and comparing scripture by scripture. With divine help, we are to form our opinions for ourselves as we are to answer for ourselves before God. What a beautiful chapter. The truths most plainly revealed in the Bible have been involved in doubt 
and darkness by learned men who with a pretense of great wisdom teach that the scriptures are mystical, secret, spiritual meaning not apparent in the language employed. The Bible says Christ is the Son of God, but the world doesn't believe. The Bible teaches us concerning the health messages, the foundational, the highest, con I mean, uh, the highest, most nutritious, most healthy diet that God gave to us. But man has invented himself many inventions. God gives us what kind of education we need to give to our children. God has given us the blueprint of families. God has given us the wonderful medical missionary work. How to use natural remedies to restore health. God has given us the beautiful testimonies and counsels in regard to where and which environment to live, country living. God has given us beautiful truths concerning himself, the one true God message, and his son Jesus Christ. God has identified to us who the Holy Spirit is and his office. God has shown us his law. Many today do not believe that the laws of God are still as holy as when they were given in Mount Sinai, when they were pronounced in Eden to our foreparents. Many of us don't believe they have an implication in our lives today. Many of us are trampling upon the law with the beast. Brothers and sisters, it is time for us to rededicate our lives to Jesus Christ. It is time for us to begin studying again the historic Adventist message. Our pioneers did not believe that sanctification was a flight or a feeling. They did not believe that the reception of the rain was some form of ecstasy, was some form of, of excitement without the truth. Indeed, they believed that true sanctification was through the Bible too. No wonder the Bible says in chapter number 32 that my rain shall fall down as do my doctrine shall come down as rain. The latter rain comes when people of God in one accord study the prophecies of the Bible. For the prophecies we have a more sure word of prophecy. So brothers and sisters, we study the Bible as we know what it is that God is speaking to us. We will be more and more like Jesus Christ. These men are false teachers. It was to such class that Jesus declares, you know not the scripture and the power of God. The language of the Bible should be explained according to its obvious meaning. Unless a symbol of a figure is employed. Christ has given a promise, if any man do his will, he shall know his doctrine. What is the will of God? Heaven our sanctification. So those who are sanctified, who know the will of God, they know the doctrines of God. Praise the Lord. That is what God says. If any man will do my will, he shall know my doctrine. What's the will of God? To be sanctified. And so in obedience to the truth, we are sanctified. And we are brought into a knowledge of the doctrines of God. If men would but take the Bible as it reads, if there were no false teachers to mislead and confuse their minds, our work would be accomplished that would make angels glad and bring into the fold of Christ thousands upon thousands who are now wandering in air. No wonder, my friends, if you look at your Bible, follows chapter number 1, reading from verse number 23. As we bring this to a close, the Bible says in verse number 23, Turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you. That is interesting because God is saying that I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you. There is a close relationship between the spirit and the word of God. So in studying the word of God, God pours his spirit upon us. The words which I speak unto you, they are life and spirit. That is interesting. Look at the book of Isaiah. I just want to go through this a little bit quickly so that you're able to see what God is saying through the inspired one. Verses, chapter 28, verses number 9. Whom shall I teach knowledge? 
And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from meal can drawn from the breast. Precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here little, there little. For with stammering limbs and another tongue he will speak to these people. Brothers and sisters, we must study the Bible in order to come into a knowledge of truth and in order to be sanctified. May the God of peace sanctify you only. May the spirit of truth lead you to truth and allow you to be sanctified to the truth. May God bless you as you keep listening to these messages. In Jesus Christ's name, let's pray. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for the wonderful messages of truth as we are trying to know what you are teaching us. We pray, Lord, that we may know from today that you are calling us to understand that we cannot be sanctified without believing what the Bible says as the Bible reads. Help us from today that we may begin, Lord, over again to study the scriptures, to show ourselves approved, to be ready to give reason for every hope that is in us. For this is our prayer by faith in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. These messages are still coming to us from Gospel Soundness Rekindling Reformation Ministry that is based here in Kenya. We encourage you to watch our YouTube channel for more messages. Our family will be bringing to you messages of health, music, country living, and true education. May the Lord bless you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.